This is a Friday Shoes production. This is lesson 7-5 on page 373, our target. I can find the volume of prisms and cylinders. Let's talk about volume here. Volume is the measure of the space occupied by a solid. I like to say like how much water would fit inside the three-dimensional figure, the space inside. So standard measures of volume are cubic units, such as cubic inches or cubic feet. And notice we're dealing with three dimensions, therefore there will be a three on our units. All right, how about the volume of a prism? The volume V of a prism is the area of the base, and we use B, the large B, capital B, for base. And that's, I'll show you here on what we call a rectangular prism, which I'm drawing on right now. The base is a rectangle. And on a triangular prism, it's going to be a triangle. So that's what we call the base. And we multiply by the height. Once we find that base area, sometimes it's easy to remember this big B is equal to base area. You might want to write that in your notes. We have to find out the base area, then we multiply by the height. And the height is the distance between the two bases. So for instance, I'll use this triangular prism that's kind of fallen down there. We have to measure the distance between the base and the other base, and that's called our height. Same with this here, called a rectangular prism. We'd measure from one base to the other base, and that would be our height. All right, let's do one, a simple one here with the rectangular prism. So let's find the volume of the rectangular prism. We look at it. Looks like it has uh, a base here of a rectangle. Of course, the other, the top is also the other base. So what do we do here? We got to find the base area. Now, the base area in this case is length times width, which because it's a rectangle on the bottom. Let's take 5 times 9. So take a look what we do here, or 9 times 5, and then we multiply by the height, which is the distance between the two bases. And here's the other base. So you can see the distance between them is 6.5. This works, again, for all prisms. Just find the two bases, find the area of one base, multiply by the distance between the two bases. So in this case, we end up with 292.5 cubic centimeters. All right, let's look at a triangular prism. Let's find the volume of the triangular prism. Now, when we look at this prism, a lot of people think that the base is what's on the bottom. Well, not necessarily. We have to look at the 90 degree angle to each side. Now, the base in this case, and, and you'll, you'll see what I mean by this 90 degree, what is 90 degrees of that triangle? Well, there's the other triangle. The bases have to be the same and have to be 90 degrees to each other. So here we are, this is what we're looking for, the area of this one base, and then we multiply by the height, which is the distance between the two bases. All right, now the volume of a prism, of course, we're using triangle area, so we have to know the area of formula for the triangle, which of course is one half base times height of the triangle. And if you look at that triangle right there, I've kind of covered up what you need to see. You can see that the height is 7 and the base is 6. So all I have to do is multiply 6 times 7, and then multiply that by half, and then multiply by 10, which is the height, which means is the distance between the two bases. And you get 210 cubic inches. All right, you give it a shot here. Again, remember, determine what the base is, find its area, and then multiply by the height. All right, A, what do we do first? Well, we have to determine what the base is. And the base is a rectangle. So we need to find that area. That's what that big B means, the area of the base. So we know the area of a rectangle is length times width. So we take their length and the width and we multiply. That'll give us our base area. That's going to be 13 times 3. The last piece is just the H. Multiply by how tall it is, or the distance between the two bases. 
and that is 8.5. So when you do that, you end up having 331.5 cubic feet, and that is your correct answer. All right, how about our triangular prism? Now, again, I want to show you that this triangular prism actually is knocked down. If you stand it back up, the base will be the triangle. That's why we call this a triangular prism anyways. All right, take a look at the, the, the determination that we know what the base is, and it's called the triangle. So we have the triangle as the base. Notice that the other end is the other triangle. So to find the area of the base, which is a triangle, we need to take the formula for finding the area of a triangle, and that's one-half base times height of the triangle itself. And you can see that the base is 8 and the height is 5 of the triangle, so the base area will be one-half times 8 times 5. That's all in red there. So that base is actually, if you do that in your head, that's 20. That's 20 millimeters to the second power. So when we do all that, multiply that then by 12, we will get 240 cubic millimeters. Again, we find the base area, just like we've been practicing, that's a triangle, just find the base of it, or the area of that base, and then, of course, multiply by how tall this thing is, or the distance between the two bases when they stand up. That's why I keep saying how tall they are, because I'll stand this up and say, oh, it's 12 millimeters tall. All right. How about cylinders? A cylinder is a solid with bases that are congruent, parallel circles connected with a curved side. You can use, it's like a can. You can use the formula V equals B times H, base area times height, to find the volume of a cylinder where the base is a circle. So this is just like prisms. Just notice that the base is going to be a circle. So the volume V of the cylinder with the area of the base B times the H, height H is just like the one that we used before for prisms. Again, V equals uh, capital B times H, or base area times height. All right, let's try one here, and is it, through the example, number three says, find the volume of the cylinder, round to the nearest tenth. Notice this can has been knocked over. That's what like, I like to say about it, because we don't want to say that the base is the bottom. Notice the bottom doesn't make any sense, because it's just sitting on its side. The base uh, is the circle that goes through the whole solid. I call that 90 degrees 2. So let's take a look. What do we do first? Well, we got to determine that we do have a base that is a circle, so we are going to use our pi r squared. And if we do, we're going to need to know what the radius is. So I've shown you here that the radius is actually 6.5 feet, not 13 feet. That's the diameter. Thanks for having 13 feet there for us, bookmaker. But we need 6.5 feet. That's going to help us finding the total area of the base. So then we plug in 6.5 feet for R and then we plug in 20 because that's the height for our uh, H. And then of course calculate with your calculator 6.5 to the second power times pi and then multiply that by 20. What you did here was find the base area, and I'm drawing kind of a circle around it because that's what you're doing. You're actually finding the area of the circle and then just multiplying by how tall it is once it stand, stood up on its base. And of course the answer there is 2,654.6 cubic feet approximately. It's approximate because we approximated pi at 3.14 or the pi button. In that case, I think they used the pi button. How about you give it a shot with a cylinder? It says, find the volume of each cylinder for rounds to the nearest tenth. Now, each cylinder, don't have to worry about it. There's only one. And I'm doing this one right here. Now, there's no picture. It says the diameter is 18 centimeters and the height is 5 centimeters. So you have to, in your mind, visualize and draw yourself a cylinder or a can that is 18 centimeters in diameter on the circle part of it. And then it's 5 centimeters tall. Now, of course, I've done this using the computer, but here's what I did, and I literally did use the computer to draw all those pieces, and then I kind of put it all together. So you got a diameter of 18 centimeters. Notice on the right there, it says 5 centimeters is the height, and I know when I'm using circles, I need to know what the radius is. 
because I'm going to need to find the area of that circle. So I have to take that diameter of 18 centimeters, divide it by two, so I have the radius of nine centimeters. All right. We do know that the base is a circle, so we're going to use the area formula for a circle, which is pi times radius squared. We're going to get that, and then we're going to, of course, use it in this formula. And that formula, of course, is V equals base area times height. So let's take our pi times our radius squared. So notice this whole thing right here is being plugged in right here. And that represents this, the base area. So when we multiply all that together, and of course then multiply by 5 of the height, and we get 1,272.3 centimeters to the third power. That is the volume. That's how much water can be held in that little can. All right. How about composite solids? It says objects that are made up of more than one type of solid are called composite solids. We just talked about uh, composite figures, and that was in two dimensions. Now we're in composite solids in three dimensions. So to find the volume of a composite solid, decompose or take apart the figures and, and make them into solids whose volumes you know how to find. So here's, a, here's an example, number four. And I just have an example here. I don't have one that you have to try, but take a look at it. It says, try to find the volume of this shape there on the right. Tanya used beads shaped like cubes to make jewelry. Each bead has a circular hole. Looks like it was drilled through the middle. Find the volume of the bead. Now, the volume is all of the space inside, but notice there this, and I'm not talking about the space inside that hole, I'm talking about all of the space inside the actual cube missing the holes or taking out that hole. Like how much plastic is needed to make this shape would be a good question. And that's a volume question. So what do we do? Well, first of all, you've got to find out what the volume is of the rectangular prism, the whole thing. Notice that's the picture there, the whole thing, 12 by 12 by 12. Well, that's going to be 12 times 12 times 12, which is 1,728 millimeters cubed. And then what we have to do is subtract out the cylinder part, because that's what we're going to cut out. Well, what is that? Well, we have a diameter of 2 millimeters, which means the radius is 1 millimeter, and a height of 12 millimeters. So when we do our base area times height, we end up with pi times 1 to the second power times 12, which is our height, and we get 37.7 cubic millimeters. So we have to, again, take the first one, the big one, and subtract this small piece out. And when you do that, you take the, one, the 1728 and subtract off the 37.7. You end up with 1,690.3 cubic millimeters. And that's how much plastic will be needed to make that with that hole in there. That is all. For uh, better understanding, of course, you can rewatch the video or look at the examples in the book or see some of the personal tutor videos online on our online textbook. And then, of course, this has been a wonderful Friday Shoes production.